The antenna mass and the antenna discharge unit must be bonded or grounded in accordance with A1021A through K. The bonding conductor or the grounding electric conductor to the electrode must be copper or other corrosive resistant material. It must be bare, covered, or insulated. Now, Ryan, you caught me on the last one. You said, well, Mike, communications grounding had, could be bare, or it could be solid, it could be stranded, it could be covered, right. it could be insulated, but it had to be listed. So right. we, in George, you find said, hey, it's a conductor. Is this one a conductor, or does this one have to be an insulated conductor? Well, this, this is what's so funny about it. <laughs> we, we made, because I, I, those proposals were mine. I, it used to say one was listed, another one wasn't, between 800, 810, 820. So you make proposals to make them all say the same thing, insulated, covered, bare. Now, this one is insulated, covered, or bare. That's fine. This uh, one does not have to be listed. Okay. The other one does have to be listed, and they changed that, so. You can make a proposal again, maybe, all I three of these? I doubt it. Okay. I'm done. I, right, I can't try. keep chasing this. All right, so <laughs> we're going to run this bonding conductor from the, one second. Here is, okay, oh, this going, okay. Here is my mast connected to the inter-system bonding terminal. Here's my discharge unit connected to the inter-system bonding terminal. One second, Mike. Remove the siding off of this for me. It's aluminum. I'll jump in a block and went behind me. They just went <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Stands sure if that's going to work. I'm gonna he was saying he was going to put a block of wood behind. Put okay, it in Brian. Just put it to rest. That discharge unit is for static. I'm sorry. It is for static. And how do you know that? Because I'm looking at um, TV antenna grounding procedures. Where at? What are you reading? You get that on our on our summary. Okay. Give, me the, give me the supporting information. Because I, I thought it was for static electricity. I have a section. I, can, re I can read it. I can read you what yeah, I'm Yeah, read it to me. Okay. What, what are you reading it from? From an a antenna installation. Okay, or an antenna installation. Go ahead. <clears throat> it says it's not just the, the height of the TV antenna that makes it susceptible to lightning strikes. TV antennas and transmission lines can accumulate static electrical charges that also increase the changes of lightning hitting an installation. To properly draw off this static electricity, a small device known as an antenna discharge unit must be included on the installation. The TV antenna discharge unit, also called a lightning arrestor, is connected to the transmission line at a point close to where the transmission line enters the, the house. Um, one end of the ground wire is attached to the discharge unit. Okay, so, so it's for static electricity. That's why it's not a ground block. Mm -hmm. So we can't use a ground block because apparently there's something going on in this discharge unit that's different than a ground block. Uh, what, size, what size wire is this? Not smaller than 10. Okay, so now this one is a 10 gauge wire for the bonding conductor. A1021, <coughs> grounding, bonding grounding electrode conductors, copper corrosive resistant material, insulation is not required. It must be securely fastened in place. The bonding conductor or the ground electric conductor must be protected from physical damage. If it's run in a metal raceway, you have to bond it at both ends. And so you can see, we definitely don't want to be bonding at both ends. And probably, this is what, we're at 810. Yeah, I'm That's not quite sure if this is the, uh, flying. the best kind of graphic underground for an antenna. But that's what we got. 81021. Bonding grounding conductors. The grounding, the bonding grounding electrode conductor must be run in a straight line as practical. Actually, I need to check, change the correction on this text. This should say the grounding, the bonding grounding electrode, electrode conductor. And that was a change made in 2011 code is to clarify that you're either running a bonding conductor or you're running a grounding electrode conductor, not a grounding conductor. Let's take a look at this here. This is my telephone. Is that right? That is going to be my primary protector, and I'm going to bond that to my inner system bonding terminal <coughs> with what size wire? 14. 14. So this should be a little smaller wire, Mike. And the, uh, this is my antenna coming in here. That's my discharge unit. Mm -hmm. And that gets bonded to the inner system bonding terminal with what size wire? 10 gauge. Mm. 10 gauge. Mm -hmm. Then the mass itself also has to get <coughs> bonded to the inner system bonding terminal. But isn't there a rule on sizing? That's 17. About 17 gauge wire. Yeah. Well, where is that at, where is Ryan? It? 
Uh, Steve, let's make sure we get this in the textbook, what he's going to be talking about here. 810.21H. F, G, okay, I haven't got there yet. Yeah. F, let me finish up F before I, they get to it. Um, connecting communication power system together. Min, okay, tying all the stuff together, 810.21F1. Why? To minimize the difference of potential between, the two, between all the systems. If there is no inter-system bond determination, then you go to one of the electrodes. Now watch this. If you have an inter-system bond determination, then these are all called bonding conductors. If you don't have an inter-system bond determination, then the discharge unit, this conductor is called the grounding electrode conductor because it's going to the electrode. Then we go to 21F2. Again, this is a discharge unit to an electrode. It's a grounding electrode conductor, and it kind of talks about uh, within five feet of point of entry if it's going to be a metal water piping system. Here's another ground. The mass is grounded to the building grounding electrode via a grounding electrode conductor. H, here we go. The bonding slash, I need to change this, grounding electrode conductor. Steve, make a note that I change that on that electrode conductor so I can pick it up on the master one. No smaller than 10-gauge or a 17-gauge copper-clad steel or bronze. And the reason they say copper, glass, steel, or bronze, I don't have that graphic here, would be back over here. This would be a great graphic to use because this is the wire here. And by the way, Mike, well, that's wire is shown as we actually need to make this wire bare because that wire is bare. It's not colored, much as I like it to be green. This is the wire that can be 17-gauge copper-clad steel or bronze. And that hand, that's part of the cable from the, from the satellite dish itself. So you don't have to, like, watch black? what we did over here. Look right here. I run a separate cable, and I run a, so I have a, a discharge unit ground bond. Then I have a satellite dish. And then I have a, the, the, a, the mass bond. I have what? I have a bond over here and have a bond for the discharge unit, where in reality, wire. this wire is 17 gauge built within this cable itself that comes all the way over here mm -hmm. that then goes to the, inter to the inter system bond determination. So that's why we have that 17 gauge permission there. 81021J, if a separate grounding electrode is used, if you put a ground rod over here, the, the, the ham radio guys do that, put a ground rod over here, then you got to bond the electrode for the, for the satellite dish. You have to bond that electrode to the building grounding electrode with a minimum six gauge wire. Here is my cable coming in. That is my discharge unit, and that's for static electricity. Thank you, Brian, for bringing that up. Going to the inner system bond determination. If you're going to go to a ground rod, 81021K tells you you have to go to 25070, and 25070 tells you you have to have fittings that are suitable for only one conductor, so that'd be a violation. And where concrete or direct buried, the fittings must be listed, identified for the purpose. 